Hi, so this is the first video in my uh, my blog project. I'll be honest, I've been procrastinating a little bit, um, putting off doing the video for, for various reasons. I was looking for something, like a really spectacular way to start it or you know open the series with. I'm, I'm committed to this project and I'm going to be doing them regularly. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, something like a big development or a a trendy HMO co-living space, or you know, I've got shops, perhaps um, something like mixed mix use commercial. I think just thinking of all different ways that we could um, start the, the blog series. Um, is it, was it going to be an interview uh, on a couch in a, in a nice sort of studio or comfortable office or something? Um, yeah. We will, we will have all of those things, I'm sure. I even sort of thought about abseiling in on a helicopter or, you know, crashing through a foam wall like Boris, but on a, uh, in a, maybe in a Ferrari, not on a, on a forklift. Anyway, um, when I saw that the property I'm in now um, had just become vacant, uh, I decided, I, I knew that this was the uh, the place to start and I knew that I'd be starting it here just normally, you know, with the... Um, just by myself with the the, uh, the 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 selfie stick, and um, I was a bit unsure of what the the blog project was for. I'll be honest; I, I, it was something that was uh, I decided we were going to do, but then actually putting down what it was for. I do quite a lot of other videos for other purposes. You might have seen some. Uh, this one's a personal project to me. I decided that the most important thing about the blog um, is it's got to be real. It's got to be about my real life experiences as a landlord. Um, we need to be in real houses, out and about, talking to real landlords about real landlord experiences. Uh, exactly what it's like to be a landlord, the ups and the downs, you know, the good, bad and ugly. Um, I, I really hope that it might help any existing landlords or want to be landlords um, with a sort of a consistent stream of how-tos, if you like, you know, how-to or even how-to not, you know, I've got plenty of those as well. Um, I'm not going to script any of these blogs too much. Um, I'm always going to have a number of bullet points, um, you know, if you, you know, a point, there's going to be at least a point to each video. Um, I'm going to make sure I give you the financials too, so anytime that there's, um, you know, I'm going to talk about a house, I'll give you the financials. Again, the good, bad and the ugly. I've got three points, three points today to cover off. Um, I think the main point, if, if you like, for, for, being, for me being in this property is, is kind of my origin story right here. Um, I'm in a three-bed terraced house in Nottingham. I'll give you a proper look around in a minute. That'll be another feature of these blogs as well. Um, this is the first time I've been back inside this property for over a decade. I think it's nearly 13 years since I came back in here. Um, this isn't the first house I bought. I must have had 60 or 70 houses when I bought this one. Um, I feel like this was the first... Uh, sensible purchase I'd ever done, I don't know, sensible is probably the wrong word, but um, I really love this place and all the ones I've ever bought like it um, in this area or any other areas, um, I still get, I call it the custard feeling, standard here, I used to describe, you know, when I'm, when, when it, it just felt so good that it felt like a kid eating custard, so I still call it the custard feeling. Uh, and I guess the three things I sort of wanted to cover off really roughly today were, how it started, why it felt like custard, how it's been for the last decade. Sometimes it hasn't quite felt like that, but you know, um, in, in sort of retrospect now, just hindsight, looking back, um, it's been bloody good. And why I am determined to buy more and more of these properties. Um, it fulfills my ambitions, my family's ambitions. It does just really good things. Um, I'm a proud landlord. This is a decent and safe home for uh, the next tenant. When, when, when we're finished with it, it will be. It's got a few little bit of touching up to do here and there. But um, yeah, let, let's, I'll, I'll flip the camera around and I'll give you a, a look around. We'll run through the financials and I'll tell you the story as well. So let me just flip the camera around and then turn around. Yep, there we go, great. Let's have a look around. In the kitchen. Like I said then, first time I've been back for 13 years. Um, We've had three tenants in that period of time. First, uh, first one stayed for about seven years, I think. And then we had somebody in here for under a year. And then the last one for, uh, for that, for the remaining time. So um, yeah, sort of five years or so. 
Um, I bought this house for £48,000 and I remember thinking I'd overpaid a little bit. Um, I paid about £2,000 to it. I hadn't, but I remember thinking, thinking that at the time. The renovation on this house cost £6,000 and um, I think that's why I, I've got a particular fond, fondness for this one house. But, or houses like this in this particular period. I, I put this kitchen in myself. <laughs> I, uh, I screwed that together. I think that's a Howden's kitchen. I don't use Howden's anymore for those kitchens, but uh, that is the 15 mil <laughs> Howden's kitchen, yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it's still in, it's still, um, you yeah. know. We're not changing the kitchen, I'll tell you that now. Where there's a few things that need changing. Uh, these last tenants put these on, look, but they left all the old handles there. Um, I think those old handles need changing, look, they do. But um, on the on the schedule of um, works for now, um, you know, it's change handles, repair this, new oven, new hob. And um, these tiles here, I think we're retiling, but look, it's just you know, stickers that the okay, tenants put on. A little bit of wallpaper on the wall there. Uh, I didn't ask me for any of these things, of course, and it was all, all these things were sort of being picked up on inspections and stuff, but um, the tenant term right now, I've written the numbers down. So, um, yeah, the, the rent, just finish off on the rent, we first off rent, rented this out for £450, uh, the last tenant was paying £600, it's going to go back on the market for £650. Um, let's get the walking around the rest of the house as I'm talking. Um, as soon as I'd um, sort of renovated this house, if you like, there's quite a lot of decorating to do and stuff here, look, you can see, that's not, that's chandelier from a very nice chandelier. Um, I know that the guys took the, uh, the guys doing the work here, they've taken the um, door off there and the smoke and all things for, for repairs um, while we do it, but uh, no, also they've been out in the garden today, huge gardens in these houses. Um, the guys have been out in the garden here today. A load of stuff to get rid of, but there was a there was a shed there and all sorts of stuff. So that's all coming out, and that will be returned ready, nice for for the next tenant. And we put some grass seed on there. We'll never turf, just do grass seed, and uh, it's a good time of the year to to do it. Um, grass grass seed that is. Uh, up the stairs. Um, yeah, I refinanced this for. I remember straight away afterwards after the renovation was done for seventy five thousand pounds. Uh, so as a valuation of seventy-five thousand pounds, and most m m most recently, I've done a, a remortgage on this. As, as again, it's um, one hundred and five thousand pounds. So this house stands with no money. I've got none of my own capital left in here. I put this bathroom in. Crikey! Um, it does pay to be a little bit handy to be able to um, uh, yeah put put a, a bathroom in. But clearly, I didn't I didn't swap the bath uh, round. It's going to get swapped now because what we do is. Uh, this is one of these houses where there's quite lots and lots of them in the UK. Dozens of them. Um, yeah, there's a, a boxing in there because of the slope of the bath. Now, you can usually get rid of most of that and push the bath a little bit further at this end and then put a nice turn up wallpaper again. Um, put a um, the shower on this end just to make it all you know, having a shower there, but it's not tall enough and you couldn't because of the window. So, uh, there's a few improvements to make here. Good to see that we've, um, so there's always an extractor fan there. That is not a humidity sensing extractor fan. So that'll get swapped out. In my houses now, I always fixed a, a humidity um, sensing extractor fan to get rid of the water in, a, in, a, in the bathroom, the humidity in the bathroom. That wardrobe was left, it was screwed to the wall. And, I don't know, that was a TV bracket. I think the, what was the wardrobe? No, I don't think it was screwed to the wall. But anyway, the, the guys have written that out. Um, I looked the um, uh, let's have a look. The maintenance on this house since I owned it has been two thousand three hundred and sixty pounds. Um, bad debt on the house because one of the tenants uh, did leave with a bad debt, uh, and it was eight hundred pounds um, unrecovered. And let's have a look here because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's an existing boiler. So um, you can see there's a what the scope of the work is here. It's clear the garden, tidy up the kitchen, a uh, few little alterations to the bathroom just to bring it up to spec, um, decorate throughout, carpet throughout. 
and the cost for all of that, let's have a little look, so I wrote that down again, um, it's going to be just over £2,000, just over £2,000, of which £450 of that is the tenant's deposit, because I have kept the tenant's deposit on this, and we have got it back now as well, so really important when you were renting a place out, we always do a photographic inventory, and that way you get the, uh, the deposit back. So that's a look around the house. Um, I'll turn it back around again. Okay, so there we go. That, that's, that is the place. So why am I so enthusiastic about this, um, this house? Uh, like I say, it wasn't the first house I'd bought. I'd bought quite a few um, before this house. Most, all, all of the house properties that I bought before I bought this house had been bought um, up until 2006 and 7. Um, they'd been bought in such a way that um, yeah, no, no money down was, a, was a, a, a phrase that got used a lot with same day refinancing. We did a lot of that. Uh, and I'm not saying that, um, you know, I'm not glad that we did all that stuff. And I'm, I am definitely glad we did it. Every single property I bought that way, I still own. Um, but there was definitely some um, liabilities building up by doing it that way. So, um, give you an example: we'd buy a buy a property, um, and on day one, literally the, the day that we exchanged and completed to buy it in the morning, the afternoon we'd refinance it for for a significantly higher value, usually 25, 30 percent more. And um, the mortgage loan would actually pay for the property. Sometimes give us cash back in our pockets. And um, you'd end up with the property, none of your own money left in, straight away, um, and, off, and off you go. And it, sound, it sounds really good. Well, it was really good, there's no, there's no two ways about it, but it, it does, it sounds like the land, land of milk and honey. Um, the problems that that stores up is, um, you now, you're definitely in negative equity, because it's not really worth that. Um, and have you bought the right property on the right fundamentals or did you just buy it because you could get your name on the deeds for um, for free basically um, I, I'll be honest I wasn't focused on renting these things out I wasn't focused on being a good landlord uh, you see, I was just collecting houses for free some of the houses we bought put sort of you know, 10 15 thousand pounds in the bank to buy them you know they paid us to buy them um, so renting them out and being a good landlord wasn't the top priority um, the crash came, 2008, and I got a sizable portfolio that I honestly felt like it was a bit of a liability. So this is why I feel like this is the, the this is the making of me. This this property and the this, these kinds of properties, um, they're sensible. And I remember feeling that I got that custard feeling. Yeah, instead of being worried about them, you know, buying these properties and they keeping me up at night, every single one of these properties, I felt like I needed. One of these types of properties bought for sort of fifty thousand pounds, sixty thousand pounds. Um, spend some real money on it and do a real renovation. I mean, I, I had a little van, and I, I, um, I parked it out there, and I came in and did the renovation myself. You know, in two thousand eight, there wasn't a lot else I was, I was doing because uh, you know, I'd sold, I sold another business, and um, I didn't really um, know. Yeah, you know, what it was I wanted to do at that point, but you know, um, being a landlord and getting on with this seemed like something proactive I could do. Um, so putting the kitchen in, putting the bathroom in, it, it, it felt good. Uh, creating real value, um, refinancing, and we had to wait six months, and it felt like an age. You know, yeah, six months goes flies by, and if you can't wait that long, I mean, there are ways these days you can do it a bit quicker than six months legitimately. But if you can't wait that long, then th there must be something wrong. It also means that everything has settled down, and the banks just get a lot happy with it, of course. But um, yeah, if buying that this house here just felt like a very sensible thing. When the mortgage was even, you know, we refinanced up you know, as high as we could, you know, still did that, no problem. Um, pulled out. I was going to say most of our money or almost of our money. 2008, would that have been? Seven, eight that we've done this. Um, I, I reckon we'd have got most of our money back out at this point. Maybe maybe left a little bit in. And certainly you know, three, four years later when I refinanced again, um, the, the values had gone up enough to get all of my money back out. So no capital left in at all. Uh, in the intervening period, like I said, I've never been back. We've got a great... Um, lettings team and you know, I've got a great lettings team and, and, and um, helping me out and um, 
I don't I don't have to do much, which is you know people's choice whether they want to manage their own properties or or not. But I I choose not to. Um, so I haven't had to come back very often. There hasn't been much maintenance. There's been one or two gripes and niggles, but I'm sort of shielded from them by uh, by a letting agency. And I'll be honest, it's been it's been pain free and it's paid me probably the best part of three thousand know, pounds cash flow every single year, um, maybe a bit more, and then capital growth wise, um, you know, sort of uh, getting on for what five thousand pounds a year, something like that. So double that in capital growth. So. I think you can see why I like doing it. Um, in Nottingham, we bought a lot of these. A lot, bought quite a few in Derby, you know, Rotherham, Sheffield. I know it's going up to sort of Yorkshire areas as well, but um, all over. Um, every time I see a property that looks like this, and they don't really exist at these prices uh, around in this area anymore, but you know, um, I wish they did. But every time I see a house like this in a different area, um, I'm reminded of, of that feeling and I get it again and I just want to keep going out there and, and, buy, and buy more of them. Why wouldn't you? Every single one of the properties that we buy that looks and feels like this has treated me well so far. Um, and and yeah, buying cheap, adding value, refinancing so you don't need quite so much money in as, as you would do if you're just buying you know, a house off the, sh off the shelf from an estate agent. Um, and then maybe 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 refinancing quickly or refinancing a little bit later down the line, but whatever. So you can you get your capital back and you can go again and buy some more of these, all at a safe loan to value, and the mortgage is well covered by the rent. Just seems sensible for me. So, like I say, this is this is what I love doing. This is what I like like to spend my my uh, my days doing. Um, there's other stuff I've done as well. You know, I'm sure we'll cover it off in all sorts of other. Uh, episodes of the blog but for me this is uh, got to be the number one priority number one focus it's just a bog standard vanilla house um, and I love them so that's uh, that's it for today I'll uh, get back to the recording as, as soon as I can